Welcome to a quick look at Live for Speed, a now 15-year-old game, which is a bit unfair because it has been in continuous development since then, but still it looks quite dated. But why am I showing it to you now? Um, well, sentimental reasons. I just saw a video on Reddit that features uh, that featured an artifact or two race on Blackwood, which is the track that you get for free if you try it out. Um, so let's let's show off what it does and what it is. Um, yeah, Blackwood. That's the one you get in the in the demo version. Um, and uh, yeah, let's start at the back of the grid. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Uh, nah, let's 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 do it on Pro. And. Um, Start it up, and I'm going to talk about it while we race. Um, this sim was seminal to me, coming from, I think it was Gran Turismo 3. I was looking for something more realistic, and uh, on PC. And uh, I stumbled upon, upon this gem back in 2003 and it was actually the game that made me buy my first wheel um, on my first modern force feedback wheel because I had a Thrustmaster T2 back when I was uh, in puberty which I dearly loved for playing uh, Grand Prix 2 and um, uh, Need for Speed but I digress um, this game made me buy my first 900 degree rotational uh, driving force pro by Logitech and um, yeah what does make this special I mean as you can see it has really good VR support uh, but that wasn't a feature back then um, but still one of the first racing sims that offered it I think it even predates the VR implementation of project cars and it surpasses it but that might be because it's quite dated graphics wise uh, and doesn't use that much uh, GPU power so what's the best thing about VR in this one I mean present a sense of space sense of presence really good but it's really what really sells me are the rear view mirrors it's one of those games that have a proper three-dimensional mirrors that reflect uh, depending on the angle you look at it so you can even see yourself in the mirror check your makeup yeah looking good mm. so what made this game or makes this game special it's actually one of the first indie titles uh, because it has only three developers and uh, the main coder, Scarvin Roberts, actually quit his job at uh, Lionheart Studios, he was working on Black and White before, to, to work ex exclusively on this and he manages to fund his life uh, solely by Live for Speed. Um, he is supported by Eric Bailey as an artist and Victor von Vladingen, a Dutch, I think, web guy. I think he does all the, the back end and web stuff, etc. And, and yeah, they, they went indie and uh, digital only. So this game was only available as a digital download back in 2002 uh, when, when ProBand wasn't that bit, uh, ubiquitous. It was a bold move, so they pioneered in that, um, going indie and digital only. Um, another thing that's pioneered by this game is the approach of uh, doing everything in real time. This game has very little uh, pre-calculated or canned. Um, as you can hear by the engine engine note, which is a bit on the on the uh, vacuum cleaner side. 
Um, yeah, there are no, no pre-recorded samples of cars going through the rev range. Uh, but the sound is, is synthesized in real time depending on what the car is doing right now and what the engine is doing right now and what size of engine it is etc etc which does make it sound artificial I, I, I wouldn't call this sound good by any means but it's full of information so you can actually tell quite a loss about the car just from the engine noise um, also, force feedback, no can defects. I mean, it, it does feel a bit lacking uh, when you compare it to modern sims because uh, they use they use effects, but they also use um, uh, effects as uh, to compensate for the lack of uh, the inertia or the feeling of inertia. Um, this game doesn't have it, but what this game does is. It strictly translates what the physics would uh, do uh, to the wheel. So it, it only translates the, the rotational forces and resistances. So it makes you feel really planted to the road. Um, oh, race is over already. That was quick. Uh, only fourth. And uh, yeah, but there, there's there's no can defect. That's just what the wheels are doing that would uh, transmit rotational forces to the steering wheel. Um, oh yeah, side note, it renders the whole car. So I could even, in theory, if my rig allowed it, stand up and walk around it. Um, where was I? Yeah, so everything's real time. Uh, and it still feels good. It still looks nice, but then this this free track Blackwood had has had an update this year, I think in January, that kind of prettied it up a little. But even even the parts that weren't prettied up look look quite adequate. I mean, it's not a looker, but it runs nice and looks okay. Uh, another thing that that they pioneered was. Um, kind of the, the, I wouldn't say freemium, but rather the DLC, as in you get the base game for free, which is one track in three different uh, layouts and three cars, a small 90s front wheel drive Econobox, this late 80s, early 90s Japanese sports car, and a open wheeler. A small Formula BMW car, which is actually a real car. Uh, yeah, most of the tracks and cars are fictional in this game, but they're still pretty good. Um, and then, uh, where was I? Just going off on a tangent here. Um, yeah. Another thing it pioneered in was online services, because it has online stats tracking, um, uh, it has a whole online suite that's called LFS World that lets you take a look at your best times, your hot laps, lets you upload hot laps, download hot laps of other people, download replays, uh, upload and host your own skins, um, which is a nice feature because you can make a skin, uh, upload it, and it's going to get automatically distributed to all the races on your server. Uh, so they see what your car should look like. If you if they activate that feature, also you can actually download those skins into different quality settings, uh, which are quite both quite low nowadays, of course. But back in the day, they were pretty high res. Uh, standard is 512 times 512 pixels for the whole car skin, um, and you can download as many in this resolution as you want. Uh, but you could also opt to download them in 1024 times 1024, and uh, if you do that. Uh, it'll cost you one pound for every 2,000 car skins you download, which is, I think, quite a great deal. Uh, speaking of paying, um, yeah, it's, 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 as I said before, the base game, or the demo version is free, uh, and um, 
you pay extra for content in three stages, which each cost £12. So if you want all the content, you have to pay £36. Um, the only downside uh, this system has, uh, despite it being quite pricey nowadays for a game of this age, is that you can't choose the stage you want to play. You can't just pay stage two or just stage three. You have to buy them incrementally. So if you want the stage three content, you have to buy stage one and two as well. Um, stage three content, by the way, is now is just one single track, which is the only non-fictional track in the game, Rockingham, uh, which is actually uh, laser scanned. So it's it's pretty detailed, um, but the best feature is the tire physics, which, on another tangent, is also the cause why the last big content patch featuring the VW Scirocco has been delayed for almost ten years now, because Gowan wants to make it right. Um, because, yeah, it has proper real-time tire physics. And uh, a feature that I would love many more games to have, but it only shares, I think, with Race Room, has it to a certain extent. Mafia 2 had it, for some odd reason. Uh, and this one, and I'm going to show it off right now, if I find the proper key. There it is. Forces view, disables the cockpit, but it shows me the wheels. And if you look closely at this wheel, and what it does, it deforms in real time. It has real time tire deformation. And that's a feature that made it feel so grounded. It makes it makes the cars feel like proper physics ob objects that are in physical contact with the track and not uh, floating facsimiles of cars. So uh, like so many of the contemporary sims, like the GTR2 or um, R-Factor 1. So, and, and it's a feature that, that still stands out today, because it's so well done. Real-time tire deformation. Is there more to say? No. Uh, link to the game is in the description below. Uh, check it out for free if you're into racing sims and want a bit of a blast from the past. Uh, but I also think that the devs are still well worth your support, so drop them a pound or two, or 12, or 24, or 36, and uh, play this. I mean, it, it still has really good online functionality as I said before with a suite but it also has quite quite comfortable drop in drop out multiplayer but I think nowadays it's mostly drifting and cruising servers uh, but if enough people come together one could do some proper online races even with uh, demo contents because you're not locked out um, Uh, from the demo servers, if you have more content. Um, yeah, well, that was a nice trip down memory lane. Uh, and on that, see you and good night.